Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're taking a look at the Hori Fighting Commander Okta. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, the Hori Fighting Commander Okta is a controller specifically designed for fighting games. Controllers like this are often referred to as fight pads. Looking at the specs here, it has an 8-gate analog, which is pretty unique for fight pads, and that's probably where the Okta comes from. It has micro-switch buttons, also pretty unique. Not the only controller with micro-switch buttons, but pretty unique in today's day and age. It says input sensitivity, where you can adjust the input sensitivity of the D-pad headset and mic controls, profile settings, so there's four different profiles available, and it's also compatible with Hori's companion app, which you would use to change all of these settings. Taking a look at the box here, and it does say it's designed for Xbox, but on the back of the box, it says it's designed for Xbox Series X, Xbox One, and Windows 10. In this video, I'm taking a look at the controller on Windows 10. Inside the box is just the controller and a one-page instruction manual with a QR code for the actual instruction manual. Looking at the cable here, and it is detachable at the base of it, which is very interesting to see. I was not expecting this. The overall cable length is 9.8 feet, which is very good. This is a long cable. Hori was pretty generous, but it's also kind of a downside because this cable is integrated into the controller. It's not removable. All of the buttons for this controller are on the face and on the top. There are no buttons on the back of it. On the face here at the bottom, we can see the profile button. We can see the mute button for the microphone as well as a headset button because yes, this does have a built-in headset jack. On the right hand side, we can see the six button layout, including the RB and RT buttons. On the left side of the controller, we have the eight way joystick and the D pad, giving you two different options for input. You can use one or the other or both. The controller is actually pretty comfortable to hold. It's a lot more comfortable than the previous Hori Fighting Commander. It's close to the same weight though, and it also feels very cheap. It feels hollow on the inside. The joystick on this feels good and it's actually pretty good to use. I quite like the eight-way gate here. The rubber on the top of the joystick though does feel a little bit cheap and it feels like it might peel away after a while. I'm not quite sure on the long-term durability of it. Taking a look at the D-pad here, I'm going to go into more details about this in just a minute, but if you are wondering, yes, you can press the entire D-pad in and yes, it still pivots when it's pressed in. There are four shoulder buttons on this with a lot of real estate, so they're all pretty easy to hit. All four shoulder buttons feature hinges facing the center of the controller. They can be activated no matter where you press on them. They're not very hard to press in, but at the same time, they do feel a little bit cheap, and that might be because of the size of them. Now, if you are curious about the back of the controller, well, here it is. The best feature about this controller is the micro switches behind the X, Y, R, B, A, B, and R, T buttons. The micro switches feel incredibly nice. They're very easy to activate, and there isn't a lot of travel time here or travel distance for the buttons. The buttons are very sensitive, they feel very good, and they're very clicky. Now the program to use with this to change up the button mappings is called Hori Device Manager for Xbox Series X and S, and this is available on PC on the Windows Store. If I go to the reviews here, they get a little bit interesting. There's a total of four of them that were posted on May 1st, and I think there's uh, yeah four different people, Kevin, Jim, Nick, and Rush. So they all basically say that it's a broken app and that button remapping doesn't work. So here's the program up and running. It has detected my controller just fine. If I go into it here, I'm covering it a little bit. I'll adjust my size here and just get myself out of the way. You don't need to see me, you need to see the controller. So in this app, I can see four different controller profiles. And if I go down to D-pad settings here, I can change up the settings of the D-pad. I can change the input sensitivity. There is something here I want to point out. It does say balanced input mode and I can turn it off and that's not really what I'm worried about here. I don't even really know what balanced input mode did and I couldn't really figure that one out. Maybe there's some documentation on it, I just haven't read it. That's not my problem here and that I'm not too concerned about. Watch the D-pad above me here. I'm going to zoom in on this and what I'm going to do is go around the outside of the D-pad. So I'm going to do a 360 motion hitting only the outside of the D-pad. If you see the issue here, as I go around the outside of the controller, it keeps returning to center, and that's not a good thing at all. So right now I have balanced input mode turned off, and I'll turn it on and show you the difference. Here is balanced input mode on, and the D-pad is still returning to center, even though I'm holding the outside of the D-pad I'm not pressing the inside of the D-pad at all, but it keeps resetting my position each time I change direction. 
and that's a big problem in a fighting game. I noticed this issue the very first time I started playing online. I had just plugged the controller into the computer. I let the drivers auto install. I didn't even use the Hori software yet. I wanted to see how this thing worked out of the box without any modifications to it. And I was a little bit disappointed. I was very disappointed. So I booted up Street Fighter V, I was playing online, and I couldn't figure out why certain moves weren't registering, why my blocks weren't registering, specifically my low blocks. And I'm figuring why, maybe it's the net code, maybe it's some poor execution on my part, maybe something just isn't right. And then when I started using the joystick, I didn't run into any of these issues. So I booted up training mode and I found my answer after some quick investigation. To show you exactly what I mean here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down back. I'm going to slowly cycle to down forward. And you can see Ken stands up every time I change direction. So what's happening is the controller is essentially dropping my input here. This is not good if you're trying to block. This is not good if you're trying to perform a combo. Chances are you'll drop what you're trying to perform or you'll drop your block and leave yourself wide open to an attack. And it also kind of looks like you're teabagging every time you try to do something. And to show you that this isn't supposed to happen, what I'll do now is use the joystick and hold that in the down back position, go to down and down forward. As I rotate between these positions, Ken is not standing up. Nothing is being dropped. Everything is absolutely fine here. But as soon as I switch back to the D-pad, well, the issue comes up again. Now to further drive home this point, and to show you it's not just a D-pad issue, it's a controller issue. I have the 8-Bit Do Pro 2 here. So this D-pad is very similar to the SNES D-pad. In my opinion, it's one of the best D-pads currently on the market, first and third party controllers. I'm a little bit biased, but it's an amazing D-pad. Anyways, what I'm going to do is show you holding down back. I'll rotate to down forward and you can see Ken is not standing up. Everything is fine. There is no dropped input. There is nothing wrong with this at all. It's the same as if I was using a joystick. Now moving on to the micro switches in this controller, which is probably its best feature. Dr. Smurz here did a teardown of his own controller. I didn't even have to open up mine. I was pleasantly surprised. Actually, I was shocked to see that Hori actually went with Kale micro switches. This is pretty big. I would have expected them to go with no name off brand, just kind of knock off micro switches for the sake of being called a micro switch. But no, they went out and got Kale micro switches. I would have expected Hori here to maybe promote that. To me, that's a big selling feature. People are interested in name branded stuff. And Kale is a name brand. They're a very well known brand of micro switch. The micro switches also sound pretty good. Here's some ASMR. Okay, that's enough ASMR. Moving on. Now for the price. The Hori Fighting Commander Okta is priced at $50, which isn't overly expensive, but it's also not overly cheap. In my opinion, this is priced a little bit high for what you're getting. So let's quickly go over what's good and what's not good about this controller. And we'll start out with what's good. The very first thing that's good here is the joystick. So I found the Octogate to actually make a lot of sense. It was very easy to be very accurate with it. Second thing that's good are the buttons. Micro switches are kale micro switches. The buttons feel good. There's not a lot of travel distance here, which is a good thing. And it's not very hard to activate these buttons, which is also a good thing. You can be very quick with them. On top of that, the overall shape of this is good in my opinion. It was comfortable to hold, well for me, and over long gaming sessions, I didn't cramp up at all. It was actually very good to use. The last thing that was good about this is the fact that it was plug and play. I could just plug it into my computer. I didn't need the Hori software if I didn't want it. The drivers automatically downloaded and I was off to the races. And now for the bad, and there are a few things here, unfortunately. So the first thing is it does feel cheap. This thing is hollow, it's light, it doesn't feel necessarily well built, and it doesn't feel expensive. And the shoulder buttons on this also feel cheap, and that's not a good thing. This also I did not have a good time playing claw style with, and that's kind of a disappointment. Uh, the older fighting commander I found was actually good for the claw style, but this one isn't, and that's because of this handle here. It kind of gets in the way and gets into a very uncomfortable position. For example, a controller like this that doesn't have that elongation on the one side of the controller is a little bit more comfortable uh, to play claw style. The one thing that kind of gets under my skin here, and not a lot of stuff does, but this really does, is the fact that the D-pad is so bad. It's a fighting game controller. This is a fight pad. You can't get the D-pad wrong, and Hori really, really did. They screwed this one up. 
I'm hoping that this is a defective controller and they're not all like this, but if they are, I mean, how does something like this pass your quality control? The D-pad doesn't work. It doesn't work as intended. It drops inputs. It's brutal. Like you can't have a fighting game controller with a D-pad this bad. But anyways, that is all I've got for today. I was initially really excited to review this controller. I wanted to like it. I wanted to recommend it. But at the end of the day, I kind of hate it. And that's really, really unfortunate. Let me know your thoughts on the Hori Fighting Commander Okta in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.